Welcome back to part two of lesson four of our web scraping to build social research data training series. In the first part of lesson four, we looked at scraping some uh, very simple, limited statistics about the coronavirus situation globally. In this part, we're going to look a bit more in depth. We're going to try and scrape um, what we would consider a data set, so a fairly detailed table of statistics about coronavirus uh, globally. We'll implement pretty much all of the same techniques. There's a little bit more sophistication to how we uh, scrape the data from the table, but it's still a very simple process. Uh, and at the end, we get um, quite a good uh, result. As you see, we're working again with our Jupyter Notebook, uh, which has lots of documentation and lots of examples for you to follow along with. So in this part, we'll keep it nice, nice and brief. I'll run through what we're trying to do and I'll implement it. And then I'll give you some time to go away uh, and review what we've done also and to practice and to change things uh, around uh, also. Let's just quickly familiarize ourselves with the website um, once more. So here's the table of coronavirus statistics we're interested uh, in scraping. So we've got 13 or 14 uh, different variables or columns in the table. We've got a row for um, not just every country, but we've got a, an overall aggregate um, global uh, set of statistics. Um, there's some continent statistics uh, mixed in uh, as well. And just to remind you, this is the, the same website we used uh, in the first part of lesson four. Uh, and here are the three um, pieces of information we uh, scraped during that part of the lesson. But now we're interested down here, we're interested in uh, this table uh, also. You'll notice that the table is uh, interactive. So, you know, we can uh, change some of the tabs. We can just specify we want uh, countries and, and entities that relate to North America, for example. We can look at statistics yesterday, compare them to two days ago, um, etc. So there, there's different uh, types of data that we could scrape uh, from this table. Uh, we might call this table um, a dynamic, so it changes based on our interaction with it. Um, we're going to keep it simple in this example. We're going to just scrape uh, information for all countries. Um, and the most up-to-date information uh, that we have. So again, let's run through the exact same process. So in Python, we need to set it up so we can do our web scraping. Um, let's do that. So I've loaded in the modules I need for web scraping um, and I've grabbed today's date and, and saved it in a variable called, uh, funnily enough, date. So again, first step in any web scraping process, request the web page uh, and parse it so that Python knows it's dealing uh, with a web page. So excellent, um, that's all worked and I've just condensed it down really quickly because we want to um, see the end results of this of this scrape. So previously we tried to scrape um, information that were contained in uh, div tags, so divider tags which are basically sections uh, of web pages. Now we're interested in a table uh, helpfully enough, a table in HTML is identified by the uh, table tag. So we're asking to find the table tag in the web page. And again, handily, the uh, table has a unique ID and it's called main table uh, countries uh, today, which is quite good. And then within that table, because we don't want the metadata associated with the table, um, we want to find the T body tag. And the table body tag identifies the actual content of the table uh, that we can see uh, right uh, here. And how I find how I found those tags is the same process before. Um, I went to the web page. You know, you can maybe highlight a bit that of the table just to make it a bit easier. And if I right click and I go to inspect, uh, it should bring me uh, at least very close to the table tag uh, that um, I uh, need. Yeah, so here's the, the T body tag containing all of the actual content of the table. Uh, and here's the table tag with the ID um, that I need. So, so far, so uh, good. Then I want to extract the information contained in each row in uh, the table. Here's where it gets slightly more sophisticated than what we've seen before. Essentially, we need to loop over every row of the table and then in every row, grab the information that's in every column. So we need a loop. So that's what we've got going on uh, here. So for every row uh, in the table, um, find the column and extract the text that's contained within the column. And that's all really that's happening here. There's a little bit more going on. I've provided um, you know, some written explanations uh, of what it is uh, a bit more specifically. Um, but essentially, run the scraper over the table, 
extract all of the information in the columns and then store it in a different uh, variable called uh, global info. And global info is basically a list of all of the rows in that table and that makes it easier then to write it uh, to a file um, shortly. So again I've just asked to print you know the first 10 rows of the, the global info variable and you can it looks a bit messy but you can kind of discern you know that there's a list for every row. So the first row in this list refers to the world um, row uh, in the table uh, on the web page. Uh, exactly here. So the first row uh, in the new variable I've created contains all of the information contained in this row uh, here. The second row has yeah information for the US. Um, the third row has information relating to India. Exactly. So. Just with that quick visual inspection, I can see that my scrape has worked uh, as uh, intended. And because I don't want the world uh, statistics row, um, this little bit of uh, code here says, delete the first row uh, in this list. Delete the first uh, element of that list. So a very simple uh, thing we've just done. And I've just printed, you know, I've asked to say, right, so how many rows were in, were in the table? 211, I mean, that should line up. Um, yeah, it's not quite, so I've, I've clearly not scraped some uh, of, of the information. Um, I think that will relate to the fact that, as I said, this is a dynamic table, so it'll produce some, uh, you know, some records for non-countries. So if you may remember, the Diamond Princess was, was one of the cruise ships at the beginning that couldn't dock anywhere. That's included in the official statistics. Uh, the MS Sandam, another... Uh, 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 cruise ship I believe um, but I think I've, I've grabbed uh, pretty much all of the uh, countries that I need and I've deleted some records you know relating to um, the role uh, of world statistics I, I don't want those but it's easier to export this to you know like a spreadsheet format that we're familiar with as social scientists and to work through that and to then see if there's any errors uh, with the web scrape so again, what I'm doing is creating a, down, a downloads folder if it doesn't exist. Um, if it already exists, we just move on. We don't execute that piece of code. Um, I'm creating the first row of my spreadsheet, which is the variable names. Um, I could have scraped the variable names, you know, here, um, but just to avoid, you know, spaces and gaps and, and commas and maybe quotation marks, it wasn't that difficult. So I just thought I'd write the variable names um, Myself. So you can see there are some, um, you know, gaps, gaps are fine, but you know, there's no forward slashes anymore. There's no columns within the variable names. It didn't take me that long. I thought it'd be easier if I had control over what the variables were called in the spreadsheet. I'm creating the file where I'm going to actually save the results of the scrape. Um, it goes in the downloads folder. Uh, this is the name of the file. Um, I'm appending today's date to the name of the file just as good practice. So I know when I, when I scrape the uh, scrape scraped the data um, and I'm going to save it as a, a CSV file which is a comma separated uh, values and we'll see what that looks like uh, very shortly. So then I open the file that I want to save the information in and um, I basically just set up the, the writing process so I say right I'm writing to a CSV file uh, I feed it the variables first so it writes that to the first row of the spreadsheet um, and then in my global info variable which contains all the rows of the table for every row in that list and um, write that row to the spreadsheet. So let's see if that uh, worked. So that work, worked really quickly, which is good. No, no really uh, waiting around. Um, I'll do the two means of, of demonstration as usual, which is we'll do the actual manual um, inspection. So everything I do is in this NCRM course folder in the code downloads. Yeah, so you can see, yep. Yeah, that's today's time. So you can see I didn't create this previously and I'm trying to trick you. This is actually real time web scraping, which is good. So let's have a quick check uh, if I actually wrote the information to the file uh, correctly. So I was a frisson of what? Oh. Yeah, so there's been, um, it has worked quite successfully, but as you can see, there's some extra columns here um, that don't have a variable name. And I'll explain what's happening with that um, shortly. But just a kind of cursory glance, um, yeah, it seems to have worked. And as you can as you can see, 
there's 211 rows and um, there were some rows of the table we didn't scrape so those rows again uh, as i said refer to some of the cruise ships or some of the um some of the entities or regions that are not countries but coronavirus statistics were reported um, for so what's going on with these extra variables is because it's a dynamic table uh, that we're working with this is what we can actually you know see so this is what's actually sent back to us uh, to our browser to view but if we looked at the underlying html there's actually extra variables uh, referring to each of the continents so they're hidden from our view but if i was to pick europe you know north america asia essentially those are the extra uh, columns here so there's information on north america because the usa is in north america india is in asia so there's an extra couple of statistics to do with asia and um, that we don't see in the table but that exists in the underlying um, html so there's two ways of addressing this problem we can do it in the scrape so when we you know uh, extract the tags we can do a bit more data cleaning there to ignore those those extra columns or we can scrape the information just like we've done here, get to the stage of writing it to the file. And I think this is a bit easier if I personally, I use Stata, I would just uh, import this data set into Stata and just drop those um, variables. So there's lots of ways of doing it. You don't have to be totally computational or programmatic in how you deal with some of these um, data quality uh, issues. So let's very quickly get that data set back into uh, Python so we can have a, a quick look again. So we don't have to do the manual demonstration, we can, we can pull it back into uh, uh, Python. So here we go, here's our uh, data set that we've scraped. Um, happily, you can see that when we read it back into uh, Python, it ignores those extra columns uh, in the CSV file. So that's quite handy as well that um, the pandas, which is uh, identified by the PD acronym, so the pandas data module for handling data sets has taken care of that, that kind of um, uh, surplus variable problem we were uh, having. And this all looks pretty good. So this is uh, the table. Uh, it's a bit more readable, uh, I would say, than the table as well, uh, just here. Um, and of course, more importantly, we have it now for our own uh, statistical use uh, outside of Python. And we can use again, we won't go too much into it. The, the pandas module is, is excellent for, for data management. Um, maybe not as intuitive as, as uh, Stata for me, or if you use R or SPSS, um, but it can, it can handle some unfamiliar data structures, some more complex data structures, a bit better than those statistical programs um, also. But we can use Python to pick out particular rows in the data. So give us the row where the country variable uh, takes this value here. So Spain, for example, um, you may have noticed by now that I'm Irish, so I could look at the Irish record, um, et cetera, et cetera. So excellent, so that's uh, lesson four. We've looked at two examples, one reasonably simple, just getting you know three bits of information from a web page and writing it to a file. And the second part, we've done a bit more of a realistic example, something that you're probably gonna do yourself when you're scraping uh, data, which is a table exists. So you know the data is already kind of neatly arranged and you wanna get that table uh, and download it and put it into a file for your own uh, future uh, use. So that's the end of the, the practical uh, examples we'll do in this training series. The next lesson is going to focus on some of the ethical and legal considerations uh, of engaging in uh, web scraping. So looking forward to having you join us.